Okay, we have here today another integral from the UNSW integration B2024. This is semifinals round two, problem one. We have the integral from zero to four pi of the GCD of the floor of four plus sine x and the floor of three minus cosine x dx. Okay, to get started with this, the thing I know is there's just a lot going on here, but none of it is really that complicated. I mean, we know how to get a GCD. We have the floor function. We've got some trig functions. So even though there's a lot to evaluate, none of it's particularly difficult. Now, the first thing I want to deal with is just this upper bound here, 4 pi. I don't really want that there. The thing going on here, and that's because, you know, you notice we have sine x and cosine x here in our integral. So what that's telling me is this that's just going to repeat every 2 pi. So what I can do is actually change this upper bound to 2 pi, and then we can just look at it as two copies of this and bring it to up front. And now from here, we can get into evaluating the GCD and what's going on inside here. But for that, what I think I want to do is look at the unit circle so we can evaluate sine and cosine. Okay, so looking at our unit circle, what we can do is let's just use this in order to evaluate this and try to simplify everything going inside. Now, the nice thing about sine and cosine is we know that those values are always going to be between minus 1 and 1. Because both these trig functions are inside the floor function, the floor function is going to round us down to the next nearest integer. And so what's basically happening in this case with sine and cosine inside the floor is there's really only three possible values for those. It's really just going to be minus one, zero, or one. And so by looking at the unit circle with the four quadrants, we can basically just break this up into four cases and find the values of sine and cosine in each region. And then later what we can do is break up our integral into four pieces too. And then everything here with GCD is just going to reduce down to some integer value. So to see how this works, let's start with quadrant one over here. This is the simplest because we know that sine and cosine are both positive between zero and one in quadrant number one. So like looking at our expression here, what we want to do, we're trying to evaluate the GCD. And then here for sine, sine's going between zero and one. So then when we add four to it, it's going to be between four and five, but the floor is going to round us down. So this first term here is just going to be a four. And then for cosine, again, of course, that's going to be between zero and one. So we subtract that, whatever that cosine value is, we subtract that from three. Now we're between, now we're gonna be between two and three. The floor is gonna round us down to two. And so the second value here is just gonna be a two. And now we can just evaluate the GCD, which is the greatest common divisor, the largest number that can divide both these. And so in this case, the largest number that can divide four and two, this is just gonna be a two here. Then next, I think what I'm gonna do is let's just jump to quadrant three. I'll skip two and we'll jump to three where both sine and cosine are negative. So then coming back, doing the same kind of thing, we want our GCD, this first value, when sine is going between zero and minus one, what's gonna happen here is for this first term, it's gonna be between three and four, but the floor is gonna round us down. And so this number is gonna be a three. Doing the same kind of thing with cosine, when cosine is between zero and minus one, so we have a negative cosine, but the minus is going to reverse that. So now this is going to be between three and four. The floor is going to round us down to three. Then taking the GCD of this, what divides three and three? Well, it has to be just three. So we've got our quadrant three value. Then back to quadrant two. Now at this point, we really have all the values we need so we can go a little bit quicker. So for the sine value, first of all, it's going to be exactly the same as this right here because we know sine is going to be between zero and one. So taking that value right there, this is going to be a four. And then for cosine, when cosine is less than zero, that's going to be the same as this case over here. When cosine is negative, we did this and we ended up with a three. So this second value here is going to be a three. But now taking the GCD of four and three, well, those two numbers are coprime. So then this value just has to be a one. And last, coming down to quadrant four, we want our GCD. Now, again, for this sine value, it's going to be the same as this quadrant three case because sine is less than zero here and here. So we can just use that value right there of three. And then for cosine, cosine greater than zero is just like this case. It's going to bring us down to two for this value, just like this value here. But then again, like this case right here for the GCD, there's no common divisor. So this is just going to return a one right here. So what we've accomplished here with these four values, what we're going to do is when we break this into four different integrals, they're going to correspond to each of these quadrants, right? We'll break it on pi over two, pi, three pi over two. This will be our zero right here. Well, zero and two pi. But when we do this, what's inside the integral for each case, it's just gonna be a constant value and it's gonna be these values right here, two, one, three, and one. But when this is a constant, we can actually just bring it outside of the integral. So let's just actually generalize what each of these integrals is gonna look like. Without defining the bounds, we'll just call it b to a. We're just gonna be integrating one when we pull the constant out. So when we do this, we're just gonna get x evaluated from a to b, but that's just b minus a. 
But when we set up our integral broken up on quadrants like that, then we know exactly what our B minus A value is because it's all gonna be the same. We've separated each of these integrals and in our bounds by pi over two. So we're gonna know that this value in each case is gonna be pi over two. But now at this point, I think we have everything we need to pull this together and finish it off. Okay, now just summing up everything we did from the previous board, we have over here in blue, these are the values that we found from our unit circle. And what we've done is we use that to reduce in the integral each of these values. So we have our values in blue here. And so we've just broken up our integral into the quadrants. So that's how we have four integrals with the values we found here. But we determined that each of these constants can come out front of the integral. And we do that and we get the same integral. We're just integrating one in each case. And we determine that value is gonna be just pi over two. And then now we've got pi over two in common. So we can actually factor that out. So we're gonna have two times pi over two. And then we can sum up all of these values. Doing that two plus one plus three plus one gives me seven. Twos will just cancel here. And so for my final solution of this, we just get seven pi. Okay, there you have it. Good problem from UNSW 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.